Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Aaron Cohen Gadol. I'm a neurosurgeon. I've been involved in the management of patients suffering from craniofrangiomas for many years. And today I'd like to talk to you about the information that is important for the journey of the patients after they have been diagnosed with this tumor type. So what is a craniofrangioma? It's a brain tumor that is benign and slow growing. That's very important. This tumor is not a cancer. And it occurs typically near the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus. In other words, at the level of the skull base. It can compress the surrounding structures such as the optic nerve. In other words, the vision nerve that takes information from the eyes to the brain and affect uh, visualization of uh, things every day. Also, because they're sticky to the normal structures, complete resection, unfortunately, is not possible. And therefore, these tumors tend to recur, and that tends to be the most challenging detail in their management. Fortunately, these tumors are rare. They affect less than two people per one million people per year. They account for about one to two, one to three percent of all brain tumors. And the symptoms are more commonly seen in children between age of 5 to 14 and older adults in the age of 50 to 70. So there are two peaks of age for this tumor type. There is a couple of terminologies that are very important for patients who have been diagnosed with a craniofrangioma. The first terminology is a pituitary gland. It is a gland that is very much involved with these tumors and closely associated. The pituitary gland is a small bean-shaped gland at the level of the skull base that produces hormones that are very critical for body functions, such as growth hormones. And the second terminology is what is a hormone? It's a chemical substance, such, a growth, such as a growth hormone, that helps control actions of cells or tissues in the body. And more specifically, for the growth hormone, would be controlling the growth. So what are the typical symptoms related to craniofrangiomas? Number one is headache, vomiting, or visual problems. These are the top three problems that um, can be associated with a craniofrangioma. There are other less common symptoms such as confusion, extreme thirst or urination, feeling tired, loss of appetite, weight changes, problems with thinking or learning, and slow growth or um, other related uh, problems. What are the tests that we typically use? Uh, the first test is usually a CT scan or a computer tomography where we can see the calcifications within the gland and obviously very importantly an MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, where the tumors are easily differentiated from the surrounding soft tissues and their character in terms of having cysts filled with uh, fluid are found. Uh, but typically in this area, pre a presence of calcification on CT scan and cyst in the tumor uh, signifies the presence of a craniofrangioma relative to a typical pituitary tumor. What are the options for treatment? Observation, radiation, and surgical resection. Surgical resection is the primary mode of treatment. However, at the end, most of the patient require three of these options in some form uh, to treat the tumor most effectively. So when we start with observation, this is for tumors that are relatively small, they're asymptomatic, and these tumors can be observed. And obviously every six months or a year, MRI is performed to make sure the tumor is not growing. Also, radiosurgery may be an option for these tumors. That is most effective for recurrent tumors or tumors that cannot be removed um, easily via surgery or safely. What is radiosurgery? It's concentrated beams of radiation that are aimed at the tumor while preserving and protecting the surrounding vital structures. It takes, this takes about 30 to 50 minutes and the patients go home same day. Also, there is another form of radiotherapy called fractionated radiotherapy. This is smaller doses of radiation that are aimed at the tumor uh, over several visits, up to uh, you know, a month of treatment. And it takes up to 18 months or more for the radiation to take effect and stop the growth of the tumor. Um, when we talk about surgery, um, the surgeon tries to remove as much of the tumor wholly or partially 
The more the tumor is removed, the better it is. Obviously, it requires an experienced surgeon to be able to remove as much of the tumor as safely as possible. Partial removal, again, is for those situations where the tumor is very stuck to the vessels or the pituitary gland itself. Complete removal is possible, but may require sacrificing the pituitary gland function and hormone replacement for the rest of life. What are the complications related to surgery? It could be vision deterioration, hormonal abnormalities due to injury to the pituitary gland because this tumor typically arises and is very much associated with the stalk of the pituitary gland which um, controls the functions of the pituitary gland. Excessive thirst or urination can be long-term complications related to the failure of the pituitary gland, uh, leakage of brain fluid leak through the nose, and strong sensation of hunger, hyperphagia in other words, especially among the children who undergo this procedure, and also radiation-induced optic neuropathy. In other words, injury to the optic nerve because of radiation can be another complication related to this tumor. The most common approach for removal of the tumor is through the nose, through a transvenular operation, because this provides the most effective pathway and least invasive to be able to remove this tumor. So what's important to know about craniopharyngiomas that are they are chronic conditions. In other words, the patient will require some sort of treatment for the rest of her life in terms of radiation treatment or hormonal therapy to be able to manage their treatment very effectively. Unfortunately, nearly up to a third of tumor can recur but can be treated with other modes of therapy including radiation. Survival is very favorable with 90% of the adults and children alive and functional at 10 years. So overall, as a patient, I would like you to know that these tumors are not cancerous. Very effective therapies exist. Experience of the surgeon is critical for favorable outcome and maximal tumor removal safely. It has been an honor for me for the past 20 years to be involved with the care of many of patients suffering from this tumor type and I'll be more than happy to provide you with a second, consult, second opinion consultation if needed. Thank you.